records. Whether it's the longest, the highest, the fastest, or the first, records carry weight. Roger Bannister's 4 minute mile, Usain Bolt's 9.58 second 100 meters, Pele's 1,279 career goals, and Bob Paisley becoming the first manager to win three European Cups. Every one of these records is iconic, but in football, there's always new ground to be broken. The Big Five, a nickname given to the collective leagues of England, France, Germany, Italy and Spain. While there are many managers to have experienced triumph in one of these leagues, the number to have won the title in two or more of them is extremely small. According to my research, this exclusive club comprises 16 names. Antonio Conte, Louis van Gaal, Jurgen Klopp, Luis Carniglia, Vujadin Boskov, Roberto Mancini, Giovanni Trapattoni, William Garbutt, Max Merkel, Helenio Herrera, Fabio Capello, Albert Schaffer and Arsene Wenger have all won the league in two of the big five, while Pep Guardiola and Jose Mourinho have won in three. Carlo Ancelotti, meanwhile, is in a league of his own. The last name on this list, he has won four of the big five, with La Liga the only league trophy currently missing from the list. So, will Carlo Ancelotti be the first to achieve the incredible feat of winning the big five Grand Slam? Well, I might have something to say about that. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a brand new series on the channel. Uh, this is a series that I'm going to be entitling The Grand Slam. We're chasing after the five major league titles of European football, England, Spain, Italy, Germany and France. We're going to try and do it before anyone can do it in real life. Carlo Ancelotti, as you will have seen in the introduction video, is the closest to completing the feat. He is only one league title away. And funnily enough, that league title is the league title of Spain, a place where he is currently managing as the manager of Real Madrid. So that's how are we going to set this game up? Well, it's pretty simple, really. We're going to be starting with a, a proper team, with a proper club team lineup. So much the same as most saves in Master League, where you're not starting up with a brand new imaginary team. So we're going to select club team lineup. And the big, big question is going to be, where do we start in the league pyramid? Uh, it's difficult to do a true journeyman in the style of football manager in this game, because, of course, there are only two divisions in most of the major leagues. So it's going to be a second division club because we do want to work up to being the manager of a, a league winning worthy side. But the question is, do we start off in England, France, Spain? Italy, uh, I've, it, <laughs> I'm all over the place. The only, actually, funnily enough, the Bundesliga is the one that we can take off the table straight away because it's not licensed, doesn't have a second division, and so we're going to have to work our way into the Bundesliga. Um, so the choice really is between Spain, Italy, France, and England. I would suggest that since we've uh, been to England in the championship already, we're not going to do that again. So now the choice is down to France, Italy, or Spain. Now, it's a big question. It's a huge question. I'm wondering who we can go for. I'm just going to have a quick look through and see who the worst teams are. Okay, so we've got Chambly and uh, Dunkirk in the French league, as well as Pau and uh, Rodez. So those are options. We want a real challenge here. So we're going to go for a one and a half star club. So there aren't any teams in Serie B who are one and a half star. And uh, where is Spain? I think Spain is down here. So let's have a quick look. Are we uh, looking at any one and a half? We, there is one. It's Mirandes. So maybe Mirandes, maybe uh, Sabadell. 
Hmm. Okay. I'm I'm feeling France, ladies and gentlemen. So I think we're going to head back towards France, and uh, we're going to have a look at these one and a half star clubs again. Uh, Dunkirk, Chambly. Hmm. Pau or Rodez. I'm feeling a little bit of Chambly or Dunkirk, honestly. I quite like the Dunkirk uh, badge there with the little dolphin. Can't say as I remember Dunkirk being particularly popular with the dolphins, but uh, should we just go with it? Why not? We're going to go with Dunkirk, ladies and gentlemen. We'll go through the rest of the setup process on Fast Forward, so join me back here in a minute, and uh, we'll see how we've decided to set everything up. Okay, everybody, so welcome back. You can see we've chosen Steven Gerrard as the base for our manager this time out, but we're not going with uh, Steven Gerrard's name. We're going with Dave Blaze, and uh, pretty much the exact same setup to last time out with the, uh, the old Master League. We're going for normal across the board in terms of budget, transfer difficulty, and all of that stuff. We've locked the opening transfer window, so we're going to have to deal with what we have. And uh, as well as that, we've uh, chosen Superstar difficulty as well as uh, Pounds Sterling as the uh, denomination of choice. We're just meeting a few of the uh, players here as we're newly ensconced in the club. And of course, remember this being a journeyman style save, we may not end up being at Dunkirk for very long. But I, uh, I, I would really like to uh, do as well as possible with this team. Bearing in mind, we're one of the worst teams in the league. We should be aiming for probably mid-table. But uh, ideally, if we want to kick on, probably playoffs. Okay, so, well, straight away, the, uh, this fella here is very optimistic. He reckons that we need at least sixth place as one of the worst teams in the league. That is highly, highly optimistic. Uh, let's promise a finish in the top half of the league. 13th or higher seems slightly more appropriate. Okay, now we're just going to skip through here and uh, we can finally have a look at what we have in terms of squad after of course we meet the press yeah they're going to ask us uh, what we think about our chances before we've had a chance to look at the squad that always made a lot more sense to me hell of a lot of sense so congratulations on becoming manager what is your plan for the team you're going to introduce your own system or stick with what you got I've got my own ideas There will probably be a little bit of turnover if we're still at the club. If we haven't had any option to move after the uh, next transfer window opens, we'll probably look to bring a few players in. But as I've said, the, uh, the opening transfer window is locked. So we're going to be dealing with what we've been dealt here. What style of football do we want to play? Well, we want it to be fun, don't we? So uh, let's, let's put on a show, hopefully. It's going to be turgid long ball football now, isn't it? I've set myself up for a loss. Oh dear, oh dear. Can't blame people wanting to see results, but what good is that if you're not entertaining? Let's win with style. That's what we're basically saying here. So we're doing a pretty good job of uh, giving the press a few answers that are going to come back to haunt us later on. We're going to get bitten in the arse several times over. And uh, now, of course, we get into the usual blah, blah, blah. Have, you've never played Master League before, have you? Wouldn't it be nice if there was a box at the beginning saying, have you played Master League before? Would you like to have all of these little information boxes pick, uh, tick up? It would save us a lot of time. OK, so we're into the main menu now. We can see that we're going to be kicking off 
with a uh, well oh dear oh dear we're going to be playing against uh, I have no idea who that is let's have <laughs> let's have a look who are we playing against for Valencia and I've wondered if that might have been them they with the swan uh, logo oh, that's a nice logo actually it's a nice simple badge I quite like it uh, they're not too much better than we are to be fair could be quite an entertaining match and again the quality of the players is going to mean that it's probably going to be very scrappy football We've got a french cup game against claremont almost immediately afterwards is that claremont i can't really tell from the badge down there it doesn't matter we'll find out soon enough but let's have a quick look at the squad and see what we can make of our uh, our players and uh, well we're not terrible we're mid 60s pretty much across the board at worst they like to play a 4-4-2, which I'm not against sticking with for the time being. Uh, let's have a look on the bench and see what else we have. So we have a, a lad called Bordaud, Bordaud, who can uh, play as an attacking midfielder, as well as playing on the left and the right. He's 33 years old, so he's probably on the decline already, if we have a quick look. We can't see that on this page, of course. Um, not a huge squad. Oh, actually, no, it's a massive squad. Forgive me. But uh, a squad where there's an awful lot of players who probably aren't going to get anywhere near good enough. Uh, we've got a good goalkeeper. We've got a fairly decent backup goalkeeper. That's uh, that, that's something that uh, encourages me. Two centre forwards, Diara and uh, Chocunte. Chocunte. We're going to call him Chocunte. Uh, both 68 rated. Quite different players, though. Diara a little bit quicker, not so strong. Uh, Chikunte, on the other hand, is all about that strength and power. Let's have a look at his height. Looks like a bit of a target man to me. 191 centimetres. Yep, he is absolutely a target man. So, obviously, with this tactic, they'll be looking to play it into uh, Chikunte and uh, knock it down for Diara afterwards, who uh, is not a terrible centre forward, let's be fair to him. 28 years old, not going to get any better Let's have a look in the uh, the negotiations tab so we can actually have a look at what they're going to be doing in ways of development. So, goalkeeper will be getting better. Centre-back. Okay, well, Cissé is going to improve, but uh, Barr looks as though he's on the way out. However, we do have a, a centre-back by the name of Kuagba uh, who can play at centre-back, and uh, he, uh, he looks like he's going to improve fairly well as well. And he's already just as good as Barr seems to be. So that's definitely something to look at. Uh, we've got a couple of left backs. Again, one on, on the decline, one on the uh, the uptick. Yeah, we haven't got a terrible squad. There's a few players that are on the decline. But let's be honest, we're probably not going to be here long enough for it to bother us too much. Um, right, well, I'm going to... Uh, I'm probably going to do something that you should never do in Football Manager or even in Pro Evolution Soccer, since that's the actual game we're playing. And that is, I'm going to launch straight into the first game of the season without getting used to the team. Right, so uh, let's have a quick look at the tactics to at least get an idea of what they want to be doing, because we do know it's 4-4-2, but we do need to have a look at how the tactics are going to look. So we're a counter-attacking side. That's interesting. Uh, a long ball playing team as well. Play it down the wings. We like to maintain formation, which makes sense for a 4-4-2. Defensively, all-out defence, wide containment area, and conservative pressure, which isn't too different from how I like to play anyway. Uh, I think this first game in league is going to be interesting to see exactly uh, what we uh, are going to uh, be up against. But let's get into it. Let's Let's not waste any more time. You guys are all here to watch football games being played, and that, by golly, that is what we are going to do today. So, we're already a good 10 minutes into the video. We want to see some progress. So, here we are, a day before the game, and uh, we have some news come up. And that news is that uh, none of our players have been picked for international duty. Well, you know, that's a bonus of being a shitty little second division team, is that very rarely do you lose your players to international play, and as a result, very rarely do you have to worry about them being semi-depleted for a big game coming up right after the uh, the inevitable interlull. So here we are, another press conference. We've now had twice as many press conferences as matches. First season as manager around the corner. How do you feel right now? I mean, I feel the same as, as normal. So 
we've got three options here. Strong kit start is key to taking the title. Uh, make the fans proud or we're ready for them. I'm just going to say we're going to make the fans proud. We're going to do our best here. Um, I don't normally play long balls, so it's going to be interesting to see how the team uh, works with that particular tactic highlighted. That being said, we do have that big centre forward who is going to probably make the difference for us. I, I should think he would be more than capable of knocking the ball down. Now here we are with the, uh, the now famous psychic talk before the big game, the first game of the season. I'm clapping so you can tell that the volume's on. But my voice is not making a sound in this room because I am communicating with you through the medium of telepathy. And everybody else claps as well. And off we go. Now, a little bit of housekeeping before we get started, and that's that uh, I have now uh, imported the, uh, the vol version 8 of the PES Universe uh, option file, meaning that while a lot of the lesser teams don't necessarily have up-to-date kits, all of the big teams certainly do. So I, I honestly, I could not tell you if this is this se season's or last season's kits. I've not looked at what was changed in, the, uh, in version 8, but uh, I, I hope that uh, these kits uh, represent a, uh, a change for, uh, so that we've got uh, a more up-to-date and uh, lifelike example of the game. That's a lovely kit for Valencian, by the way. We're going to play uh, in our Blackburn style kit, and they're going to play in their red. And uh, do we even want to make any changes to the game plan? Well, the only player that really needs changing is Karouche. 67 rated, and look at that diagram at the bottom there he doesn't look great at all does he and oh our bench is all over the place dear goodness gracious me okay let's change this up right straight away we've got three cent we've got four center backs on the bench we only need one uh let's keep hold of coagba and let's move the rest off of the bench and i'm literally just going to put the highest rated players on the bench uh, maybe we should throw a left back onto the bench as well. Um, Romil, 66 rated. Uh, Viola, no, that's going to do because I think Viola can play in the centre of the park. So I think what we're going to do is ooh, we can't tackle though. And that central double pivot is going to be very important for us. Okay, I think maybe we're just going to take the risk with the starting 11. So here we go. We're off to the races. Game one of the league season and of the new save is about to take place. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know about you guys. It's been a, a few weeks since we finished the forest job. And uh, I'm, I'm raring to go as uh, we hear the roar of the crowd here at... Uh, the Konami Stadium, which is definitely something that I am going to have to go into the options and change because I'm pretty sure that Dunkirk do not play at the Konami Stadium in real life. So out we come. This is probably going to be a quick and dirty season with Dunkirk before we try to move on to a team that have a better chance of winning one of the big five leagues. Along the way, we will also be aiming to win the Champions League. So, in fact, this is a, uh, a six-trophy challenge rather than a five-trophy challenge. Hopefully, being the home team in the first game of the season is going to give us that little push that we need. These players, familiar with each other, but not at all familiar with the manager in charge now. It will be interesting to see what effect the new man in charge has as uh, we kick off here and immediately the ball is played out to the, the right hand side is Tiam inside to Karouche a little bit of a heavy touch from Karouche having to get used again of course to uh, playing with a, a lower calibre of uh, footballer here here's Goteni into Karouche Oh, that's poor. That's poor. That wasn't the pass he wanted. And here they come. Now, we're supposed to be a counter-attacking side. So, if we can win the ball here, 
then this might be the moment that we've been waiting for as Dos Santos ooh, very nearly loses the ball but finds Masson good defending and now here we go can we hit them on the break well I'm not seeing any movement up front here's uh, Chocunte out to Bosca back into Chocunte oh Bosca very nearly getting the ball back but it's a really poor pass by Chocunte and now the ball up in the middle of the pitch Bar heads it on it's Sai into Goteni Rochato cross into the box but it's going to go all the way over and out for a goal kick to Valenciennes hoofs it up the centre of the pitch oh Chikunse is onto this and he's holding his man off really well oh no let himself down with the pass he's a big strong lad but oh hello there's a chance here Bosca Chukunte maybe back to Diara oh it's off the post what a chance that has just gone begging Bosca Karouche Rochato into sight Rochato looking for the ball back gets it Sai giving him support if he needs it here is Sai Bosca could possibly have been offside. Here's Karouche. Oh, it's another great save. Well, Dunkirk are knocking at the door here. But so far, Valenciennes have managed to keep them at bay. Lovely save low down. I think possibly the ball would have come off the post once again had the goalkeeper not got to it. Now Karouche, who seems to be at the centre of everything here, takes the corner. And if Makalau can get a good touch on this. Oh, well, that's excellent defending by Barr. Karouche, once again. Goteni. Back into Karouche. Oh, well. It's a foul on the edge of the area, it looks like. And it's going to be a chance here for Dunkirk. Just as well, because Chiconte looked as though he had lost that ball, but it's right on the edge here. And well, I don't see much wrong with that. I think the referee is watching a different game to the rest of us. Now, who's going to take this? Because Karouche, on his left foot, probably is the best option. So we're going to go with him. Can he make himself an instant hero in this first game of the season? He might have overdone this. He has overdone it, and it just sails over the bar. Probably need a better free kick taker than him. But he's the best in the team, so not much other option as uh, Kufo does a great job of winning that. Here's Masson. Chergui to Dos Santos. Down the line for Chergui again. Oh, it's a good chance. And it goes begging. This is a good counter-attack from Dunkirk. Oh, it's a poor ball by Karouche. Thirty-two minutes into this first half. Dunkirk have looked the more likely to score. But it is still nil-nil here. Lovely ball out to Tiam on the opposite wing. Now, Bosca. To Goteni. Diara. Oh, he looked to drag it back for his mate. It's come out to Sai. Cross into the box. Nobody there. Oh, it's a massive cock up. And the ball is in the back of the net. And the goalkeepers managed to cock it up. Massively, the referee has given it, and Diara scores. 
a most fortuitous opening goal of the season for Dunkirk. Genuinely thought he was offside there. I mean, how was he not? He's level, I think. And all the goalkeeper can do, fair play to him, he got to the initial shot. But all he could do was palm it out as far as Diara. See here, and it just comes off of his, uh, well, his difference. And it goes into the back of the net. It's 1-0 to Dunkirk. They're not playing as well with this tactic as I would like. I think there will be tweaks made. Uh, we're not playing terribly, I have to say. All things considered, pretty happy. Diara over the top looking for Chikunte. Doesn't get there, but this is a lovely ball through for Diara. Oh, my word. Well, he slid where he should have run. And my goodness me, Dunkirk are playing very well at the moment. Alba. It's not Alba, sorry. Bar. Oh, this is a chance for... Oh, well. Oh, dear, oh, dear. He's blazed it over the top. The Valencian striker will be absolutely furious with himself. It looked easy at the score. At the very least, he should have got it on target. So Maraval looking for options. He's just going to pass it into defence and let them play out from there, which at this level could be quite risky. Not entirely sure that uh, this team have the quality to play the ball out from, from the back, but they're going to try it anyway. Here's uh, Rochetto out to Sai. Into the middle for Diara. He's just behind him. Over the top looking for Diara. Sai should get back to this. Ball is recycled and there is the half-time whistle. And it's 1-0 to Dunkirk thanks to a fortuitous bounce of the ball off of the crotch of Diara in the 38th minute. Dunkirk have probably deserved that lead on the basis of that first half performance. They've definitely looked the brighter. We'll see what they can do in this second half now. Good take from the big target man. Oh, it's poor touch though. Poor touch from him and he needs to be better than that if he's going to lead the line. Bar wins the header. Comes out as far as Karouche. Rochito. It's Karouche, but he just can't get ahead of uh, his man. And the ball finds its way back to Bar. Sight. Ah, oh, poor touch from Rochito. Oh, he's taken by Dos Santos. Somehow a foul is not given. And here's Masson now. Sai will probably win that header. Gets it back to Bar. Tiam on the right wing. Plays it forward looking for Bosca. Now Karouche once again. Everything going through this man. Got any into Rochato. A better touch from him this time. Sai now. Crossed out to Karouche. Takes the shot. Could do nothing with it. And now Karouche again. What can he do this time? Ball through for Diara. Oh, my word. Another fantastic save by the goalkeeper. He's earned his number one jersey today. And now the ball played forward. Bar again, pretty dominant in the air. Doing a good job of fielding those high balls through the centre of defence. Gotteni does a great job of winning the ball back in midfield. And he just holds up play long enough to allow the players to extend beyond him. Bosca. Oh, the big target man. Into the middle for Diara. Oh, the pass is poor. Has to do better than that. Perhaps he should have tried taking it on himself. Clearly he's not there to service his partner. Almeida to uh, Kankava. Chegui. Rochito does a good job of just holding him 
off for a second. Is Almeida again? Oh, it's a lovely little drop of the shoulder to get around his man. Robal. Bar can't reach it, but neither can Shergui. Ooh, that's cheeky from Sai. Didn't think he was going to make it. And look at how stretched this game is now. Here's Bosca. Into Chukunte. Looking for Diara. If I gets through. Oh, it's another great save. Will he ever score intentionally is the question that a lot of these fans are asking themselves. Gateni picks it up. There's space out wide. That's not the ball. Would have preferred it to Bosca. Make a couple of changes in the minute just to freshen things up slightly. Paul Diara very nearly managing to intercept that. Over the top it goes. Bar looking to head it away and does so. Gateni trying his best to win the ball in midfield but can't quite manage it. Cissé. Karouche. Oh, just lost it for a second. Gateni. Out to Bosca. Karouche. And it's possibly going to go out for a throw here. No, he manages to keep it in. It's Kufo. Long ball forward. Cissé underneath it. Can't win the header. Almeida picks up the loose ball. Spreads it right to Masson who tries another one up the middle. Cissé underneath, wins this one. Falls to Kankava. Another one over the top. They're really going for this long ball. Valencien. Now Bosca down the line to the big man. One over the top looking for Diara. Nitim can't get there first, but the goalkeeper does. And I don't think the ball's going to go out of play before the end of the game here, but I do want to try and make a change. And it's going to be for a slightly more mobile option in Romil. And uh, let's have a look at these two midfielders. They've both got enough bite in their tackle. I want to keep them on the pitch. Rochato possibly could do with replacing. And uh, there are better options here. And I'm going to go with Budaud, I think who is right-footed but can play on the left. So he'll be cutting in slightly. And that's assuming that the ball goes out of play in the next five minutes and we actually get them on. Right, here we go. Robal, oh, he's made a mockery of Tiam's defending. He's got round him. Can he get the ball in? Oh, Tiam does really well to recover there. Karouche, once again, looks to play one over the top. Can't make it work took a deflection to be fair to him Dunkirk have looked pretty solid today considering that they're under the tutelage of a new manager they've done exactly what they needed to do it's a 1-0 victory for the boys in blue here at the well the Konami Stadium allegedly rumours abound that a, uh, a naming sponsorship deal has gone down and uh, as soon as next week, we may see a brand new name for this old stadium. But that's going to do it for the highlights. Can't believe that goal that we did score. We had eight shots, six on target, and we scored with our penis. Absolutely unbelievable. A good performance, considering that we're playing with tactics that we're unfamiliar with, a team that we're unfamiliar with. There's a couple of things that I would look to change if I was with this club for any length of time. Chukunte is not a bad player, but he's very one-dimensional. I think he's a player that you would probably try to load the ball in from wide areas and try to get his head onto it. Not too bad at holding the ball up, but his passing does let him down somewhat. But the midfield is decent. I think the defence is pretty all right. If Valencien are the extent of what we can expect to play against in this division, then it could be a very, very good time had by all, especially if we can get our tactics right. So let's have a look at the league table and see where we sit after week one. And you can see we're sitting in joint seventh along with Toulouse, Cannes and Paris FC. Auxerre lead the table with a 3-0 victory over 
it's either Chambly or Saussure, I'm not sure. But uh, Auxerre and Troy essentially joint top on uh, on three points with the goal difference in their favour. The only other teams above us are Grenoble, Guingon, Ajaccio and Clermont. So we'll have to see how things go as we progress in this league. But that is going to do it for today. Uh, thank you to everyone who has returned to watch this series. I apologise for being away for as long as I was, but uh, I needed a little bit of a break from Master League action. But now we are heading headlong into another long-term save. We're going to be at, at least six clubs by my maths. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how quickly we can get ourselves into a position where we can start winning leagues. Uh, it's good to see that the, uh, the men in charge are happy with that initial performance. So that'll do us. Next time out, we'll be playing against... Uh, is that Claremont? Let's have a look. I think it is. Yep, we're going to be playing against Claremont in the uh, the French Cup. And that's going to be at the Estadio del Nuevo Triunfo. So look forward to that one. Until next time, though, that's going to do it for this episode of the Grand Slam. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.